Hello Internet, praise be to God, and welcome back to Legend of Zelda 2 Adventure of Link. If you're returning from last episode, welcome back, I'm glad you're here. If you didn't see last episode, please tell me why you started with episode 2. I would love to hear why. Anyhow, last time we went through the first dungeon but didn't actually beat it, so we can use the beating that dungeon for strategic purposes later on in the game. We also encountered a nice swamp and learned some new magical abilities. We have to trek back to the swamp this time, because guess what? If you game over in this game, you have to go all the way back to that starting palace with Zelda. With one exception, but we're probably not going to see that exception. Also, now that I have a level 3 sword, uh, I can kill Octoroks in one hit, which is very useful, because Octoroks actually give a decent amount of experience. Oop. And I'm just going to say, you're probably going to have to make this route quite a few times throughout the game. Go for trekking for this cave. Because you don't get a shortcut until you actually get the hammer. And the hammer is one of the hardest things in the game to get. Yeah, you see, you saw the Garaya kept lowering his hand and then throwing the boomerang to the lower level. I, 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 I know his pattern now, so it's, I can beat them with relative ease. I say relative because I still did have some trouble. Alright, we're going to do something. We're going to cast a jump spell, then grab the magic jar. So that way we actually don't lose as much magic as we normally would. And now that I'm at very low HP, I'm going to take advantage of that fairy I saw in here earlier. Once again, you got to move away from it and then run and jump into it in order to get enough height. So what you really want to do is encounter the bot enemies here, because you've just got a few Octoroks here, which are very easy to kill. Oh, they only give you 10. And now it costs a thousand experience points to level up your attack. I'm, I'm cool with that. I'm just going to keep on grinding, and grinding, and grinding, and grinding. That didn't sound good. Okay, this area is really, really annoying. There's a very, There are several very special forest tiles here that give you special battles, and you're going to need to encounter these four later on in the game. Which I'm actually probably going to do right now, just so I can get the hammer as soon as possible. We could do Dungeon 2, but... Yes, yeah, so you'll notice that I encountered two of these squares. Basically, there's a series of four squares all surrounding a fifth square, and those four squares that are surrounding the fifth square all have these types of battles. The fifth square is a special screen that you actually need to encounter completely randomly. So, it's up here. It's a guy's house. Terrible design. This forest does not stick out at all, and you basically have to stumble across it randomly. Hey, dude. Bagu is my name. Show my note to Riverman. So basically, in one of the towns, there's going to be a guy who's like, Hey, only villagers can take the ferry, and you need to take the ferry. And he'll be like, Oh wait, you have a note from Bagu? Okay, I'll let you across. Generally, that is the part of the game where most people start to break out the strategy guide. Because Miyamoto designed Zelda 1 and 2, or Zelda 1 especially, to basically need people to collaborate in order to solve it. Alright, we're gonna just go on the path, so that way we can walk a good way through the forest without... Yeah, this forest right here. Oh, that's just a fairy? That's it? Oh, man. Bridges tend to have special things on them. Hi! This is not a good combination. Bubbles and bugs. Nope. I am saving. I am saving experience for attack. Actually, I could level up life as well, I suppose. I probably need to level up my life, actually, now that I think about it. <laughs> What's in this forest? I actually forget. I bet it's a pea bag. Yes, it's a pea bag! It's a pea bag! Only worth 100. I'm not too worried about grabbing these uh, one time use only pea bags because. Once we reach a certain part of the game, we uh, get a pretty good level grinding spot, and it's pretty easy to level up there. Pretty safe. Alright, this is the town I've been looking for. Water Town of Saria. Saria is the forest stage, uh, sage from Ocarina. Eyes of Ganon are everywhere. Be careful. Sorry, I know nothing. Oh, it's the lady with poor self-esteem again. Don't worry, lady. Don't discount your own worth. You are valuable to this society. You're not super valuable to this game, but I appreciate that you're here. Alright, I gotta keep going. What 
what's in here? Let's examine this table. I found a mirror under the table. You actually have to press attack on the table in order to find that. In Midoro Swamp, find a handy glove. That's referencing the second dungeon item. Hey, lady. I could use the red lady who refills my HP. Uh, hi. What's up? Zzz. It's a sleeping monster. You can't actually attack it. Oh, yes, you are the one I'm looking for. Yes, please heal me, whatever that entails. Okay, this is the part where you need Bagu's note. You know Bagu? Then I can help you cross. Alright, I'm just... Warning up ahead, what I'm about to do is probably one of the toughest parts of the game. We are going to Death Mountain, and Death Mountain is incredibly dangerous and really, really hard to beat. And I am very low level still, so I probably should have gone to the second palace before doing this. So it's a giant maze, essentially. I'll do what I can. We're also going to meet new enemies in this area called... They're basically axe-wielding guys called, like, Gorax, I think. They are really hard to de defeat, unless you know exactly what you need to do. Basically, similar to what I've been doing with the uh, Gorayas, run up to a Gorak and then just crouch stab and then keep running into him and crouch stabbing, and it'll perfectly time it so that he misses you with his axes every time. When I encounter one, you'll know what I mean. So these guys are just red moblins. These are not the Gorax. Similar to the Iron Knuckles, just try to keep at the same level as his spear and he can't hurt you. Enemies can drop pea bags every uh, five ki guys you kill. That's important to note. All right. So here again, jump. But after you start falling from your max height, that's when you want to swing. Otherwise, you're gonna miss them. Blue Garayas, they're not fun. Thankfully, I was able to corner him. Hi, Octorox. Okay, this is a little tough because that's a very narrow gap you have to make. But again, this is still the easy part of Death Mountain. We're going to meet the Gorax very soon, though. I probably should have leveled up a wife. I also might... This is not good, because that bat could fly right at me. Just like that. Take that. Okay, Gorak up ahead. Yep. Just do exactly what I'm doing, and that's, like, the only safe way to get through that. I ran right up to him, crouch-stabbed him, then immediately ran into him just a little bit, and then crouch-stabbed him again, and again, and again, and that perfectly times it so he misses you with his axe. The red Gorax are much, much harder, and you cannot do that strategy for. And my best strategy is... Avoid them at all costs. Even if you need to use the jump spell to, like, jump over him. Oh no. I hate these fish bones! Fish bones steal your EXP. Because again, infinitely spawning. Infinitely spawning enemies. They either steal your experience or your magic, and it's totally random at what height they're going to spit fireballs at you. I just assume they're going to spit them low down so that... Ah, oh, doggone it! And that deals a ton of damage, because I only have two life. My life is only at level two. Okay. Jump. Shield. This is a room with a red Gorak. The difference him, he froze his axes. He also has way more HP and way more attack. So basically, good luck getting past him. Try to, try to have the high ground. Obi-Wan showed it was OP. It is. Unfortunately, you won't always have the opportunity for high ground, but that is absolutely what you want to do. And there's a conveniently a red jar in that room, so it refills all your magic anyways. Hi, you. Oh. This is not good. Oh, that's not good. Okay. If that happens with the Garaya and you aren't just charging head-on into him, scroll him off screen. Trust me, it's going to be easier. Oh, great. 
He's just permanently in a bad location. Okay. Ah. I am okay. I am not going to succeed with Death Mountain. There is no way I'm going to succeed with Death Mountain. Because there are still a few rooms of red Gorax that you have to deal with. <sighs> he dropped a pea bag too. Oh shoot. I am playing with so much fire because I will lose so much experience if I die here. I can see the end, which is actually bad because that means red Gorax are coming. Get back here, you red bot. This guy is a bit more challenging. But again, if you can time that first swing... I'm so close, but I'm also about to die. This is really, really dangerous. Okay, if there's a red Gorak here, I am just getting out immediately. Okay, regular Gorak. Oh, shoot. All right. Regular Gorak. I can do this. Alright, I'm actually going to leave and hope he respawns, just so I can get that attack up. And then I can have a game over. Okay, he doesn't respawn. Okay, that is going to be very, very, very dangerous, especially with the bot there. Shield, please. That bot is worrying me more, because if that bot hits me, I'm pretty much screwed. Gotta time this. In between his axe swings, I need to just run forward and cr uh, crouch stab him really quickly. Actually, can the bot please jump up here? No, he can't. Alright. This is so dangerous. Literally one wrong move and I am dead. Alright, that bot cooperated. Come on, other bot. Get up here, please. Oh, Alright. Yes! Yes! Oh my gosh, that scared me so much. Okay. I am definitely going to die. I am absolutely unquestionably going to die. My only hope is to find a, basically a fairy fountain. And there's not going to be any fairies that appear. Oh boy. Well, might as well. We're going to fall down here, even though red Gariahs are in here, and I am absolutely 100% screwed. How did that not kill me in one hit? I don't know. Oh, oh. Game over Return of Ganon, but I don't care. And I have see this here, Link 002. Wait, didn't I name myself Artie? I don't know. Maybe I didn't. Alright. So what I'm actually going to do now is I'm going back to that first palace to get the free level up. Because at this point, I think a tech is going to cost 3,000 uh, experience points. I can check. But I'm actually going back to the first palace to beat it to get that free level up, because at this point, because attack takes, in general, way more experience points to level up than any other level, like, leveling up your attack to level 5, I think, takes less than leveling up your life to level 8. Or it at least comes pretty darn close. And there are six palaces, so that's six free level ups. I am perfectly happy to use the first level up right now. Ouch. Could take that. Take that. Thankfully, I had, like, pretty much no experience for them to take. And if you're a beginner, you don't have to do what I'm doing with leveling up your attack a ton. <laughs> By all means, if you're like, I'm dying all the time, level up your life. I'm probably gonna have to... Okay, Stalthos, thank you. 
Yeah, I'm going down here just to fight the Iron Knuckle and the extra Wookiee, because I need to get at least 150 experience in order to pass through. Oh, it wouldn't let me crouch stab. Also, it's cool, you can kill bubbles if you manage to trap them, like, between a wall and the border of the screen. It's really cool. Also, bots have a random amount of HP. Like, bots in the first dungeon, even though they look identical to bots in later dungeons, they have less HP. Okay, that was interesting. It never even showed my sword stabbing animation. I won't complain, though. Let's see how easy Wookiees are to take out now. Oh, man! Bad Wookiee. That'll do a flat lot of nothing. I'm one hit away from death anyways. But I'm so powerful. <laughs> Three hits and he's dead. Okay, 2,000 to level up attack. That's good. Oh, actually, I can just go... I don't even have to fight the extra Wookiee in the upper room. I can literally just go down to the boss, because the boss is definitely going to give me 20 experience for killing him. And it's not the boss that gives you the free level up, it's placing the crystal in the palace. And I, I seriously never get tired of the palace music. <laughs> That's one of the few things that Zelda 2 did, like, very, very, very right. And again, this is not a bad game. I actually am having a lot of fun playing it. It's just incredibly difficult and very different from every other Zelda game out there. Oh, hey! Alright, we're going down. We're going down. This is uncharted territory for the dungeon now. Hey, Iron Knuckle. Wow, he was really nice. Might as well use all my magic I can, because that's going to give me free magic. And hey, I actually have the low ground, which makes Stalfos is really easy to beat. Actually, I'm almost wondering, should I not put in the crystal? Because I have a decent amount of... Nah, I'm, I've already came this... I've came this far. Oh my gosh. And he's behind a locked door, too. Ouch. Level 4 sword kills Wookiees in just, like, three hits. That's pretty cool. Alright. Boss should be pa- oh. Take that. Iron Knuckles are, I swear, are some of the hardest things in the game. Alright. Boss room. Let's equip shield. Welcome to the first boss, Horsehead. He is powerful. And it is not letting me attack him, but... Wow, I died to Horsehead. That is shameful. Very shameful. I also have only two life level ups. Or actually, only one life level up. Who am I kidding? Also, sword beams don't work for most enemies. Like Iron Knuckles and bosses, sword beams don't work for. Just die, Horsehead. Come on. Nay. I like that little effect where you see Link's shadow for a second. He gives us a key. We can unlock this door. And... First dungeon complete. And that will just completely give us as much experience as we need to reach that next level up, which is attack. And then the first palace turns into rock, for some reason. That makes sense. I can't believe I deflected that fireball in an aerial jump. That's kind of impressive.
You know, uh... Alright, I finally am going to level up my life. Because I really need more life. I also probably should level up magic soon. Even though I don't use it a whole lot. And I also realized, I have five attack now. I only have three more level ups left to get for attack. That's pretty insane. Pea bag. Thank you. Enemies do drop pea bags. Ooh, free magic ba uh, bottle there. I forgot about that. If we go to the left side, ooh, they're actually free Octorox. I'll level up magic. Why not? I'm getting sick and tired of magic taking so much uh, to cast. Alright, when you encounter Octoroks, try going to the left. That tends to result in more experience. <laughs> That's the second palace. Thank you. Welcome to Second Palace. First Palace was Parappa Palace, don't think I ever saw said that. This is Swamp Palace. And you can see, he dropped a red magic jar for us. I don't recommend doing that in every dungeon, especially if you already have full magic. This dungeon is much larger and more complicated than the first dungeon, as well as having tougher enemies. That's a blue Stalfos, he can actually jump, making him a bit more of a threat. Those are horse heads. Not their official name. I'm gonna call them unicorn heads. They're annoying. Again, infinitely spawning and drain your experience. Thankfully, if you can scroll a couple on screen like that, you can just follow them to your heart's content. And they won't, uh, any, no more will spawn. Gotta watch out for these things that drip down. Occasionally they will drip down a bot that will appear. So that's important to note. That's a dead end. I do not have the dungeon maps memorized, so I'm just kind of weaning it. Alright, let's go this way. Oh, piranha plants. You remember these guys from Mario. They spit fireballs and are carnivorous. Clearly that's what they are. Oh, shoot, not a bubble. Get out of here. Alright, get down here, bot. I want to say hi. <laughs> okay, this is Blue Stalfos. Kind of similar to Red Stalfos, is just be prepared to keep running if they end up jumping. But they're not too bad. Alright, key. Sweet. We can go back up to the first floor. Boo, 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 boo. Alright, from the looks of things, I'm guessing each episode of Zelda 2 is going to be closer to a half an hour rather than 20 minutes. But that's fine, that's more content for you guys. So yep, he just dropped a bot from the ceiling. Not incredibly fun. 
Eventually, we will get a move that lets us uh, kill the unicorn guys pretty easily. But that is time is not now. Yeah, you darn! Oh, how am I still alive? How am I still alive? No! Ganon has returned three times now. Well, I guess that's as good a spot as any to stop the game here. So, thanks for watching again. I'm Colorful Artie. Tune in next time. We will be continuing our exploration of the swamp. Or we might go back to Death Mountain. Or both. We'll just have to wait and see. Until then, have a great day and God bless.